Let's finish up chapter nine now by taking a look at internal direct products. What is an internal direct product? Essentially, we're going to have a group G and within G, we're going to have some sub normal subgroup H and normal subgroup K. And the only element that they'll have in common is the identity. And again, normal being that all of the left cosets and right cosets will be the same. And it also must have the property that G, everything in G, the entire group, must be generated by the product of some element of H times some element of K. So again, we have to be able to take H times K. So for all elements G within the group G, there exists, and in fact, there exists some unique H in H and K in K such that H K is equal to G. So essentially we're saying we can multiply those to find every single element of G. The other thing, and we already talked about this when we drew our picture, is that the intersection is only the identity. Now I want to note before we look at an example that the elements of G are not ordered pairs. So when we did the external direct product, we had H cross K gave us some element that looked like h comma k but if you do h cross k as an internal direct product you're just going to get whatever h times k results in for instance let's take a look at the group d4 that's the dihedral group of order four and the elements are essentially e r r squared r cubed and then f r f r squared f r cubed f Notice we have two normal subgroups, normal being that this product would hold. So we've got that the left cosets and the right cosets would be the same because they are abelian. And I want to know if HK is in fact an internal direct product, which means can I generate every element of G using some H times K? So what's going to happen? E, which is an element of H times K would give me E and then R squared. And then if I took R times E, that would give me R and R times R squared would give me R cubed. And then R cubed times E would give me R cubed. R cubed times R squared would give me R. And then I would continue that. So now I'm at R cubed that generates things I already have in my set. Now I'm at F. So F E would give me F. F R squared would actually give me R squared F. And R F times R squared would give me R cubed F. R cubed F times R squared would give me R F. And so you'll notice we have generated the entire group G or D4 using the product of H cross K, so the internal direct product. Obviously, we have talked a lot about isomorphisms, so there are two properties here that are important. First of all, if you have an internal direct product, it's actually isomorphic to the external direct product. Now, the reason this works is that every G that's an element of G can be written in a unique way, such that H equals K, now that requires some proof, but we're not going to go through that proof. But because it is unique, then we can map the HK in my internal direct product to the H comma K in the external direct product. In addition, we have let P be a prime and G be a group of order P squared, so some prime number squared. Then our group is isomorphic to either Z sub that prime squared or um, ZP, where P is the prime, so Z sub P external direct product with itself. So for instance, if I had G is nine, 
obviously 9 is 3 squared and 3 is a prime. So G is either going to be isomorphic to Z9 or Z3 cross Z3. Again, we can see that there's a difference between an external and internal direct product. An external direct product gives us ordered pairs, and it takes any two possibly unrelated groups. So if I really wanted to, I could let H be E and R, and I could let K be 1, 2, and 2, 3, from S3. It's, there's no rule against making an external direct product of those elements. So obviously I would end up with E12, I would end up with E23, I would end up with R12, and I would end up with R23. So totally fine to do that for an external direct product. For an internal direct product, I would have to have those conditions met, which means that H times K is going to give me the entire group G. And obviously that's not the case for this example because I've taken them from two completely unrelated groups. So an external direct product Really, those, there's no rules, but an internal direct product, you need to make sure it meets the conditions. So I have an example here of H is equal to E12 and K is equal to E123, which are both in S3. Then I want you to find both the internal and external direct product if possible. So again, we know that the external direct product is possible. We just have the element from H comma the element from K, the element from H, comma the element from K, the element from H, comma the element from K, and the element from H, comma the element from K. Can I find HK. Can I find an internal direct product of these two knowing that G is S3? Well, I absolutely cannot. Even though their only value that they have in common is the trivial subgroup, so just the identity, we know that in S3 we should have E and 1, 2 and 1, 3 and 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3 and 1, 3, 2. So obviously we don't have all of the elements because when I take E times E, I get E. If I take E times one, two, three, I get one, two, three. If I take um, E times E, again, I get E. And if I take one, two times one, two, three, That's going to give me 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, and then 2 goes to 3, 3 stays fixed. So it's going to give me these three elements. That doesn't give me everything in S3. So I cannot find HK as an internal direct product, or we would say that HK is not an internal direct product. Up next, we're going to take a look at chapter 10, starting with group homomorphisms and properties.